Good day, brothers and sisters in the Pauline family. The topic given to Institute of the Holy Family is synodality of the church, sharing responsibility for the common mission. To begin, let us pray together the prayer of synodality. In the name of the Father, of the Son, of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. We stand before you, Holy Spirit, as we gather together in your name, with you alone to guide us, make yourself at home in our hearts. Teach us the way we must go and how we are to pursue it. We are weak and sinful. Do not let us promote disorder. Do not let ignorance lead us down the wrong path nor partiality influence our actions. Let us find in you our unity so that we may join it together to eternal life and not stay away of truth and what is right. All this we ask of you who are at work in every place and time in the communion of the Father and the Son forever and ever. Amen. Amen. To us members of the Institute of the Holy Family, the image of synodal church that is close to our hearts is that of a home. Present in a home are the parents and children and other kin for extended family. Following the paradigm of the, of the International Theological Commission document of synodality, we affirm that the synodal church is taught in our sacred scriptures and tradition has its roots in the way revelation has unfolded throughout history. So it's a really challenge for us to keeping alive in our homes our primal God experiences. But before we share our own personal sharing on mission on our synodal journey, we've invited Brother Hansel Mapayo of the Society of St. Paul to share with us the biblical idea of mission in the Old and New Testament. So please welcome with the love of the Lord, our guest speaker, Brother Hansel Mopayo, SSP. A blessed day to one and all. It is my pleasure to share some ideas about mission in the Bible. Scriptures teach us that God who is totally holy, meaning kadosh, uh, totally separated from humanity, has decided to pitch his tent among his people. Isaiah chapter 40 verses 21 to 22 describes it. Have you not understood from the founding of the earth? The one who is enthroned above the vault of the earth, its inhabitants like grasshoppers, who stretches the heavens like a veil and spreads them out like a tent to dwell in. This was concretely seen in their experience of the Exodus their journey on the road together out of Egypt where they were made slaves. After the revelation of Adonai Elohim, or Lord God, to Moses in a burning bush, Moses and his family, his sons, his wife, and brother Aaron returned to Egypt, but also fled out from Egypt with other Hebrew families who celebrated as a family the salvific Passover when the angel of death spared their firstborn sons and animals because of the blood of the Paschal Lamb. The Exodus was a formative event for, the, for them as a people of God. That was the moment when they became a nation in their collective consciousness. They became Israel. They are the chosen ones. God called them. They learned that God journeyed with them. In fact, in their journey at the wilderness, the speeching of the tent is more felt. Exodus 40 verses 34 to 38 thus describes, Then the cloud covered the tent of meeting and the glory of the Lord 
filled the tabernacle. Whenever the cloud rose from the tabernacle, the Israelites would set out on their journey. But if the cloud did not lift, they would not go forward. Only when it lifted did they go forward. The cloud of the Lord was over the tabernacle by day and pillar of fire at night in the sight of the whole house of Israel in all the stages of their journey. The in International Theological Commission's document on synodality points out that kahal or ida, meaning a gathering of people, um, this is also where hakahal, ha Elohim comes from, which the people of God's synodal vocation is disclosed. This is the first por form. In the desert, God orders the census of the tribes of Israel giving each its place. At the center of the assembly, as its only guide and shepherd, is the Lord, who becomes present through the ministry of Moses, with whom others are associated in a subordinate and collegial way, the judges, the elders, and the Levites. The assembly of the people of God consists not only of men, but also of women and children and even foreigners. It is the partnership convoked by the Lord every time he renews his covenant. Together with the sense of election made binding by their covenant making, there also has developed through their time, through time, their sense of mission. Not only because they are God's creation, not only by their vocation, which means being called by God as a chosen and priestly people, but as they experience both in good and bad relations with the surrounding nations till they were ex exiled to Babylon, this responsibility to make known the salvific action of God with others, then a sense of mission is ex strengthened. Lucien Legrand, author of The God Who Comes, says, this mission in the Old Testament is of two specific characteristics. First, it is a divine activity. Directly, it is God who manifests his glory in the sight of the nations by saving his people. Second, it is an activity addressed primarily to the people of Israel and to other people through them. Isaiah texts both uh, pre- and post-exilic attest to the Zion theology, which became more defined as they organized into an in institutionalized religion. Isaiah chapter 2 verse 3 prophesizes, Many peoples shall come and say, Come, let us climb the Lord's mountain to the house of the God of Jacob, that he may instruct us in his ways, that we may walk in his paths. For from Zion shall go forth instruction and the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. For us Christians who take the suffering servant not only as the collective persona of whole people of Israel, but also as an individual, we see this fulfilled in the life of Jesus. And mission becomes more concrete when the Messiah is born of a woman born under the law. The letter to the Hebrew says, in times past, God spoke in fragmentary ways through the prophets. Now, when the designated time had come, he spoke to us through his son. The role of Mary and Joseph as co-sojourners co and guardian of Jesus, as this was provided to us by the infancy narratives, enlightened to us about the certitude of Jesus being the Messiah of his people, one who also had to undergo a journey to Egypt and depart Egypt after the persecution is over. For did not Jesus also undertake the suffering of the Hebrews who fled from Egypt? Mary and Joseph, through their guiding and life-giving roles, become the leading examples of how it is to live life in a chaste, poor, and obedient way. Later, the resurrected Jesus, having shared with, with us or with the disciples his life through his words and deeds, 
commissioned the 11 disciples and which has also become the mission of every follower of Jesus. Thus, in Matthew 28, verses 18 to 20, Jesus says, Even to all of us now, all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I am with you until the end of the age. So as a church strengthened by the presence of the Holy Spirit, we also in our different charisms and functions share the responsibilities of carrying out the mission Jesus entrusted to us. We are always encouraged by the teaching of Peter who says, you are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people he claims for his own to proclaim the glorious works of the one who called you from darkness into his marvelous light. Once you were no people, but now you are God's people. Once there was no mercy for you, but now you have found mercy. What does this mean for us in the ISF? By virtue of our baptism, we also share in the priestly, prophetic, and royal office of Jesus Christ. So mindful of our role, we offer reflections on our specific expression to take the challenge of a synodal church, taking note of what Numbers 74 and 104 challenge us to conversion, even in our mentalities and attitudes, practices, and structures. The great challenge for pastoral conversion that follows from this for the life of the church is to intensify the mutual collaboration of all the evangelizing witness based on everyone's gift and roles without clericalizing lay people and without turning the clergy into lay people and in any case avoiding the temptation of an excessive clericalism, which keeps lay people away from the decision making. All the members of the Pauline family have a specific charism and apostolate to live out our common mission. We believe that we share with the rest of the Pauline family the identity of being consecrated members. We share in the preparation of the vows of evangelical councils so that our Christian life be perfected according to our state of life and vocation. Our fidelity to the common practices and individual responsibilities of the member remain for us a daily challenge. Uh, we are Antonia and Kirino Ramos. Friends calls us Shoni and Rino, respectively. We are perpetual professed members of the Institute of the Holy Family in the Philippines. We came to know the Instituto Santa Familia through the invitation of Father Dominador Guzman, Jr. of the Society of St. Paul. My first attendance in the Institute was in September 2007. My husband, Rino, joined in December 2007. We had no previous knowledge of what the Institute was all about. A brochure was given to me with this caption, Blessed Alberioni, founder of the Pauline family. In it, were written the words of the founder, the process of sanctification is a process of Christification until Christ be in you. Therefore, we'll, we will be saint in the measure in which we live the life of Jesus Christ, or better, in the measure in which Jesus Christ lives in us. This is what St. Paul says of himself. 
it is no longer I live, who, it is no longer I who live, it is Christ living in me. This passage inspired my heart deeply. I was enthralled by the idea of living a consecrated life with vows of obedience, poverty, conjugal chastity, and fidelity to the Pope within the context of marriage and family life. I told myself that this is the spirituality that I was longing for, for a long time. So then, I slowly came to know the Institute and the Pauline family as well. As perpetual professed member of the Instituto Santa Familia, living a consecrated life is both a privilege and a challenge. Problems, trials, and tribulations of every kind come our way, and we wanted to give up at times. He would pray fervently to premium maestro holding his relic close to us. I would pray to Primo Maestro. You founded the Institute of the Holy Family. Please help me in the way that I have, you have envisioned it to be. I prayed a lot, especially in moments of trials and tribulations. I would say with conviction that I was never left alone. I cannot count the number of times that I have fallen, but I was lifted up by my prayers to Blessed James Alberioni. Devotion to Mary, Queen of the Apostles, to St. Paul, and to Blessed Timothy Jocardo will always be a part of our spiritual journey and not to forget our special devotion to St. Joseph, our patriarchal saint of IHF Philippines. Our life now depends, now does not revolve only on our family, but on a bigger family, the Pauline family. Our spiritual life is greatly nourished through our monthly formation, retreats, recollection, and talks that we attend religiously. A deeper relationship to Jesus, Master Way, Truth, and Life is ingrained through daily masses, prayers, community life apostolate, fidelity, and faithfulness to our vocation. Our most significant exposure to the Pauline community happened when we visited and stayed at the SSP General House, which was facilitated by Father Joven Lagdamen, a Filipino priest based in Rome. We really felt the love and concern of the community, considering we came from a foreign land and culture. We were so blessed at that time because we found some priest and brother Hansel Mapayo, our guest speaker, from the Philippines attending CTIA meeting that time, and we had reunion of sort in Rome. We were able to meet other members of the Pauline family because we arrived on the feast day of Blessed Timothy Jacardo. Visiting the museum and daily adoration at the chapel Soto Scripta brought us closer to Primo Maestro's life, work, and apostolate of social communication as attested by a lot of memorabilia. On our last day of stay, I went for an hour of adoration in the silence of my heart. I heard clearly the word, quality. I asked Primo Maestro to direct me to find the true meaning of the word. During this time of pandemic, life in the Institute becomes more challenging. Face-to-face -face gathering is prohibited. As a couple coordinator of ISF Manila community, we have to think and plan on how the spiritual activity of the group can be conducted. The pandemic opens us 
to the wide door of social communication platforms. And I think this is a positive effect of COVID-19 pandemic crisis. Inadequate technical knowledge of computers and low internet, internet connectivity are a hindrance. We are very thankful that we have a son who, teach us, who teaches me patiently on how to use different platforms of social communications such as Facebook, YouTube, Messenger, Viber, Instagram, and Zoom. I would say I was forced to learn about all these platforms to be in constant communication with families, friends, communities, and the world. Again, I always pray to Primo Maestro for help. In my silent reflection and contemplative prayers, I was so amazed to realize that in more than two years, I am immersed in virtual media. Fifty years after his father's death, his life, his presence, and his teaching are still very relevant. To the virtual and social communication platforms, one can evangelize many people without leaving the comfort and security of one's home. We did not dream that someday we will be active in social communication media. By the grace of God, we are into it in our own little way of sharing the gospel and faith to many people. It is remarkable likewise that during this pandemic crisis, I was exposed to work with other members of the Pauline family for the Pauline Bible Year. I was a member of the Committee for the Pauline Bible Year, working with the representatives of the Pauline family. I treasure in my heart how we helped and encouraged each other as a family to work for the Word of God, that the Word of the Lord may spread quickly. This is a life-giving experience that shows the value of belonging to the Pauline family. What a blessing it is indeed to be counted as members of a big religious family. Our earnest prayer is to bring younger couples, even widows and widowers, to the Institute, maybe in God's own time, our own children, will one day be member of the Instituto Santa Familia. Our spiritual life now is not only for our own family, but it is always side by side with our extended family, the ISF. This is a journey toward heaven, our common goal. Our fidelity towards our vocation and mission keep us going, our own fiat, so to speak. We just share everything we have with the community, be it time, treasure, talent, inspiration, and prayers. Though we don't live in a cloistered environment, we support each other in whatever we can as an individual or as a community. The concern of one becomes like twice that of every member especially when sickness comes. As couple coordinator of ISF, we are also acting as a parent to all members, sharing life, work, and mission for the common good. As Paul lines, we always bear in mind the four wheels of our spirituality, piety, study, apostolate, and common life which is in itself living a life of synodality. Living in synodality does not limit us to live a life in harmony with our own community. It should be transmitted to a bigger community, our families, relatives, friends, and neighbors, especially the least of society. Mission is not just doing apostolic work alone, but doing something together for a better good. 
Even in the time of Jesus, the apostles were sent two by two for a mission. Sometimes we have the tendency to do work and apostolate in our own to avoid hassle and discomfort. We forget that synodality is a consultative process. We have to know, ask, respect, and consider other people's opinion on matters that will affect a greater number of individuals. On our sharing, we may use the following guide points to ponder. Questions for sharing. How do we keep our God experiences burning in order to continue with zeal our mission as consecrated persons? In my institute, how do we live out Jesus' prophetic, kingly, and priestly mission in the personal and communitarian level? In this fast-changing world, what new fields of mission are emerging and can be engaged in by Paulines? Thank, Thank you, everyone, everyone and have, and a, have blessed a blessed day, day ahead.